Hi, welcome to another video. This one's going to be about how to get a great start to Division 2. Uh, I've started the video at a point where I'm going to assume that uh, if you've got the game you'll have created your character, you'll have gone through the initial introduction. Um, there's a, a small cutscene style mission that you have to go through uh, which kind of sets the scene as to what's going on in Washington DC. Um, then pretty much the, the next cutscene brings you to Washington DC and you get given a mission uh, to reach the White House. Uh, the White House will be the base of operations through the entire game. Um, so this is really just very much the, the introductory mission to it. Um, it's not too difficult as long as you remember the basics of, of uh, the division which is cover is important and uh, you can't stand toe to toe with the enemies. So without any further ado, let's get started on the mission. Since we're just starting the game, uh, we've got very basic weapons, uh, so basically just a pistol and assault rifle, level one. Um, you level up and get so many new weapons so quickly, as uh, I, I find it's, it's counterproductive to get too attached to a particular weapon, just use whatever works for you. Um, as we approach these enemies, you'll see that I'm moving from cover to cover. Um, always best to fight from cover, you, you, you really don't have much survivability, especially early on. Uh, and you'll notice that where possible I'm trying to aim for the head, you do get a lot of extra damage for a headshot and also a lot of extra XP as you're going along through the game. One of the key things to remember before starting a firefight is to make sure that you have a full magazine. If you look at the screen here, you can see that I've got 31 rounds left in the, in the magazine. Um, it's a, there's a reason why it's called a dead man's click uh, in the forces. Uh, you really will find yourself in a world of trouble if you walk into a fight and only have one or two rounds in the magazine. Uh, having said that, you will see me break my own rule later, <laughs> later on in the video, so extra points if you can spot when that is. A couple of quick tips if you're new to first or third person shooters. Uh, it's only in the movies you see someone go full automatic and actually hit what they're aiming at. Far better to use bursts if you're using an automatic weapon like an assault rifle or a submachine gun, unless you're up very close. Um, also, when you hear grenade away, um, or you spot a grenadier that you're up against, if you catch them in the, in the act of launching a grenade, they'll actually drop it at their feet and blow them up. So that's a really quite useful way of killing someone behind cover if they are peppering you with grenades occasionally. I found that in the Division 2 it's quite useful if you can actually get a little, an advantage of height um, against uh, the enemies. So you'll see me climb up into this perch. Um, also while I'm up there you'll see me having a look around to see if I can spot any uh, explodable terrain objects like um, petrol cans or canisters. Uh, if you use those and shoot those, sorry, uh, you'll actually kill whoever's standing next to them or at least induce a bleed or shock, uh, which is actually quite a useful way of taking out a group of enemies or just uh, ad dealing additional damage that you might not be able to do just purely by shooting. Division 2 really rewards the smart use of cover, so always make sure you move it from cover to cover. The flip side of that is it, it very often punishes overly aggressive behaviour. If you go rushing in, even if it's behind cover, you can quite often find yourself surrounded or flanked by the enemy. Um, particularly early on when you don't have much survivability, that's a very quick way to just get uh, get killed. So always bear that in mind. Also, uh, during that firefight, you might have seen when I was shooting at the, the, the Grenadier that uh, one or two of the shots caused a little yellow star to appear. That means that I've hit a weak point. So any of your uh, enemies that you'll be fighting against, if they have a weak point, you'll see that when you shoot them in it, it actually creates that little yellow star. 
So if you hit that repeatedly, it will have an effect on them. So in the case of a grenadier, it will actually explode their back carrying the grenades and kill them. Uh, on one of the bosses, it might actually stop them from firing their gun for a short while. Um, there, there's, there's many different effects, but always worth trying to find a weak spot if you can do if you're up against something that's not going down very easily. So we made it to the White House. Um, from here, we start to pick up missions to go and uh, free up settlements, uh, the first of which is the theater. Um, there's a bit of narrative that, go that goes on now, so uh, I'll keep quiet until that's finished. Um, the short version is we have to go and see Manny, um, who will then point us in the direction of the theater settlement. So I'll be back with some commentary once we've got that far. This is you. Welcome to DC. I'm Manny. I run comms. I'm guessing the division alert brought you here? Damn glad to see you. Let me show you exactly how screwed we are. Ever since the JTF imploded, the city's become a playground for murderous fuckheads. There are several main factions and a whole lot of bottom feeders sucking up whatever the big dogs miss. A few civilian settlements are still holding out against all this villainy. They need more help than we've been able to provide, especially since the Division network went dark. Um, that's Kelso. She's one of the last surviving agents in DC. She's operating at the theater settlement on a priority mission. You should go check in with her. If anyone knows how to get these systems back online, it's her. Oh, and um, introduce yourself to the locals while you're at it. It'll comfort them to know there's a new sheriff in town. By the way, Agent, head downstairs and check in with the Quartermaster. He can get you set up with some division tech. You're gonna need the edge. So now we've leveled up, uh, that enables us to free up some additional perks uh, and abilities. So we'd now go and see Coop hey, Dennison, the quartermaster. A new skill? Since this video is about playing solo, the first skill that I'm going to choose is the Hive, which has a very, very useful heal facility, which will just keep you in the fight for longer, uh, make your life a lot easier to start with, with the game. The first perk you get by default is an additional weapon slot giving you a secondary uh, weapon. Um, once I've got taken this uh, as I level up I then like to take additional perks which increase my survivability uh, and also the damage output. The, the key thing being survivability when you're solo because there's no one there to revive you. Take care. So now we have access to the shade map of Washington DC um, and you'll see various things appearing on there and as we visit the different areas more and more detail will be revealed. Uh, our first 
area is going to be to the uh, right hand side of the map uh, we're going to be looking for the theatre settlement and that's where we'll be heading to first. The neighborhoods you'll be moving through are hyena territory. They're a bunch of vicious assholes who prey on the weak and vulnerable and kill for kicks. And they destroy whatever they can't steal for themselves. But they've been an especially serious problem for the theater settlement. In their situation, we need the help of the settlements. But they can't do much if they're struggling to survive. So see what you can do to take some pressure off them. But don't forget that we have to get the Shade Network back to full strength. In a lot of places, the Division has been the only thing holding people together. But with DC as the priority, most agents are completely cut off. They're not gonna last long without support. So, as, as I'm running through the world, you can see that uh, my GPS has got a line appearing above the top of the, uh, the agent. If I follow that, that will take me straight to the, the waypoint on the map that I'm trying to get to. The only downside of just following the GPS is that you very much miss out on um, some of the hidden uh, gems that you might find in the map. The, the, the realisation of Washington DC uh, is amazing in this game. I really, really like it. Um, also, there's lots and lots of hidden... Um, equipment and uh, components and stuff like that you can pick up which will come in really really useful later on particularly uh, once you start looking at um, control points where you can give the control point officer um, food, water, com components, that sort of thing because then it increases the range at which you can see these hidden bags and boxes on the map they shine a lot, a lot brighter once you've actually donated stuff to the control points so you'll see me having to wander around now looking for a few different bits of equipment and boxes which I know are there from previous run-throughs but they are all over the map. Wherever you go you stand a fair chance of finding one um, as long as it looks out of the way. You quite often come across these um, gates where you'll find some kind of lock uh, like a bicycle lock or something on it. Um, Sometimes they're just a mesh fence and you can see through uh, like this one where you can actually see through there are things inside. Sometimes it's, it's actually got some kind of screening there so you can't see. Um, it's ever so easy to just walk past these and not, not see them but it's always worth taking a look. Some of the locks you can shoot, some you can't. If you can shoot it, it will lead to either a, an area you couldn't normally get to or some extra equipment so definitely worth doing. Um, but you'll see what I mean when I, when I target the lock and shoot it. You just saw a box uh, with the word hyenas above it and zero of one. That's basically a locked loot box that you can only get the key for from um, either bosses or sometimes you'll find a key cabinet on a wall. Um, usually they have some, some fairly good loot in there so if you come back to them later on when you have got a key it's worth doing. Again, you'll see me running around all over the place um, as I'm going through this area, not necessarily following the GPS line. Um, that's so I can find these bags and holdalls and what have you. Um, underground car parks in particular are quite often full of, uh, of decent loot crates. Um, one of the things you'll find with this game is you actually don't have a problem finding loot. It is everywhere. You're constantly getting new guns to the point where every time I you know, go out and do a mission, I then spend time afterwards working out which gun to keep and stuff like that so you, you'll always be finding new and better equipment
as we start this firefight, you'll see that I take a couple of seconds just to look around at the enemies and see who's, uh, who we're up against. Um, and then I spot that there's a grenadier. Now, the first shots I take are to actually try and detonate the satchel that they're carrying. And you'll see the, how quickly that finishes them off rather than actually trying to shoot them separately. Um, it also works really well when there's a crowd of them around the grenadiers. Sometimes you see them patrolling. Um, so it's a, definitely a very effective way of, uh, of taking out the group. You can see it's just started raining. Uh, the weather effects in this game are incredibly good. Um, they change the dynamic of the combat inc uh, massively. Uh, sometimes there'll be such a dense fog that you can barely even see the rest of the, uh, the map or the, the screen around you. Um, so again, always be careful depending on what the weather's doing that there might be something that you can't see. And that's it, we're nearly at the theatre settlement, just around the corner. Once we've spoken to the boss of the theatre settlement, that opens up a number of other missions, all of which are designed to open up additional facilities within the theatre settlement and, and, and will gradually go through as we level up. Um, I'll do further videos on some of those, but uh, the, the main thing is that, you know, hopefully this has given you an idea of how to get a great start. Uh, Division 2. The main thing is always remember cover, always remember to make sure you check your ammunition before you start a firefight. Don't be too aggressive and don't move into cover in the middle of a group of enemies. Um, you cannot go to toe to toe with the enemies in this game, especially at the start. And that's it for the video. All that's left to say is if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Either way, if you could leave a comment, uh, I'm always interested to hear what people have got to say. Uh, and if you do like the, the content, then please uh, subscribe and click the notification bell. Thanks again.